All right, today I'm in the Star Sports office in London with Garold Norris, otherwise known as Icy, on Twitter, for people that go on Twitter. I've flown in from Dublin especially, so thank you very much for uh, making the effort to come and talk to us. So first of all, what are you best at, pro punting or putting the fear of God into racing Twitter? That's uh, definitely the second one. And why have you, why have you decided to become because you are probably the most feared person on the on the on the on the twitter sphere for um racing why did you decide to suddenly come in and start laying into people because it's not easily it's not like you're a real a real sort of um dodgy account because everybody pretty much knows who you are so you can't hide behind anonymity and you're not now no and and like i, would, I wouldn't go that far either that i'm the most feared i think it's like i would say most notorious account maybe on twitter but i wouldn't say i wouldn't say feared i mean no one no one's Everyone in racing, they, they, they like to see what I'm tweeting. They get a laugh out of it. They're happy once it's not them on the, on the end of it. Yeah, well, I've had people say to me, oh, I, I keep on the right side of that IC. I've actually had people say that to me, so, you know. <laughs> well, well I, had, I had someone recently that, uh, that said there, uh, someone, someone contacted them and said, I hear you know IC. Like, is there any chance you'd get them to lay off this jockey? So, yeah, I don't know, yeah, but he, he, he told them where to go anyway, that was the end of that. Is there any, any reason why you used the moniker IC? Uh, it, no, that that's that's basically came from a that basically came from a saying. Uh, the icy tentacles of J P McManus knows no bounds, so it's just it's just a it's just shorthand for that. Okay, now you you've we we'll go on to it later on. You're a good networker, so is this is this sort of outspoken, semi-anonymous account uh, not counterproductive? Um, yeah, so we'll say we'll say when 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 I when I was started off on Twitter, like the biggest criticism I got was like what are you doing on Twitter like it's this is a disaster you're, you're not going to be able to get a job no one will deal with you but it's actually turned out to be the complete opposite it's because people uh, take notice of the account take notice of what you're tweeting it's like a lot of times you're going to say okay well he actually has some idea what he's talking about so I've actually I've actually got more out of Twitter than people probably realise it's actually it's actually been very very helpful okay now have you had any sort of backlash at all I've had some yeah I've had some yeah, real, 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 real bad run-ins. Yeah, but uh, like I, I, I kind of have a rule in that if you if you want to message me and ask me to take something down, I'll take it down. But if you want to go around the houses and threaten me or anything like that, then I'll, 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 I'll go full blown. Has it, has it ever got serious? Anybody? Yeah, it got come serious. Up, yeah, come, yeah. Up, come up to you face to face. Not, not face to face, but it got it, 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 it did get serious once. Yeah. Are you not worried they might do after this? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when you aren't on Twitter, you're a professional gambler. I, I'm a gambler. I, I think I think professional gambler has been hijacked. Um, there's too many guys who are probably you know selling speed ratings. They're on podcasts. They're on William Hill Radio. They're writing 65 columns a week. So I mean, they're not professional gamblers. So professional gamblers like you know what a professional gambler is. You need to survive 10, 20 years in the game to be to, to be to be you know a professional gambler. I'm I'm, I'm just a gambler. I mean I'm, I'm a few a few years at it uh, seriously. So. Um, yeah, that's 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 just a hijacked phrase. I don't, I don't okay. think it means anything anymore. But do you do anything else apart from gambling? No. So, I, I, might, I, might, I, I, I mind my child. That 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 surely counts for something, doesn't it? Okay. Now, I've asked around about you. Nobody wanted to slag you off at all. But somebody <laughs> did say he would describe you as a judge of judges rather than a judge in your own right. Would you? Would you? Uh, that's that's hundred percent correct. Yeah. Okay. So what what do you concentrate on at the moment for your betting? Uh, uh, racing, um, racing. Uh, so, like, uh, this kind of goes back to your previous question. So, uh, like, a, a guy approached me on Twitter maybe two years ago, and just just liked what I was tweeting uh, at the time, and just got chatting. And I, I thought nothing of this guy. And he put up a few horses to me, and I was like, God, this this guy's interesting. We're like, you know, he's finding he's finding some real serious bets. So, so that kind that kind of relationship kind of grew, and uh, found that we had a we could help each other out so so um the two of us have been basically kind of punting together for a couple of years now so like i call him the uh the 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 league of uh, extraordinary judges <laughs> so uh, so he, he, he's just he's, he's just a guy like no no one in racing would re well not that's wrong no no one on twitter would know who this guy is but i mean he's he's just a proper proper good judge so we've we've been in and out of the trenches and uh we've had some good times and we've had some, we've had some absolutely awful times but uh over overall it's overall it's been good and it's it's just it's it's you know it's a, it's a unique card and i think i think that's important these days so so is your edge getting a good network is that yeah absolutely yeah absolutely so you, you're not sort of 
you know, sort of get your head in the form ratings, that sort of thing. Or do you no, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not oblivious to the form book. I mean, I'm not, I'm not stupid. I mean, you know, I mean, I can, I mean, most of my tweets are straight after a race, and I can pretty call up something pretty accurately. But I mean, I might have formed it absolutely not. Right. Okay. Like so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't wake up in the morning and pick up the racing post and and try and make a pay myself. No. Okay. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't, um, with your your judge of judges, you wouldn't sort of have a conversation with them about his selections you just take them oh no but absolutely have a conversation yeah i mean like that like that's that's how you i mean that's how you you know you learn yourself it's so yeah he takes me through every selection and like we'll chat about races and that and yeah, he like he's definitely helped me um helped me be a, a better judge you know right and is there a lot more to that than just basic form study in in terms of with with what he teaches you like knowing how to bet or what to, you know it, it, are there any sort of um you know, with this shot, if this drifts, we'll leave it alone, or that, that sort of thing, or is it purely taken on face value? But no, it's, it'd, it'd be more face value and form. So if the market goes against us, we don't really panic, and if the market goes with us, we don't, you know, necessarily think we're right. It's, it's, it's more like I, I, I would say that what we have in common is we, we're, we're both quite nuanced. In we, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll just kind of see. Okay, well, this is this is actually what's what this is. So if the market goes from five to seven, well, you know, we, we still want to bet it. It's still, what, what, what he's seen is still there. So let, let, let's just bet it. And he's a value guy. So would he say this is a minimum price? Yeah, he's absolute minimum price, yeah. Okay, now you sent me your CV, which most of it we couldn't even repeat because, you know, some of the things on it were, goodness gracious. But you had a torrid time working for bookies is the basic, is the basic outcome of that. Well, that's your, that's your interpretation. Well. I mean, <laughs> I read it. <laughs> it, it. It wasn't like a, a, it wasn't like a smooth career path, was it? No, 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 absolutely not. Well, for example, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this. You were sacked by Ladbrokes because no, you, you no, no, their, hold on. Hang on, hold let on. me finish the question. You put your prices up on the Betfair forum before they published them. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't sacked. I was demoted. There's oh. a, there's an absolute massive difference uh, uh, between the two. So why did you do that? Ah, just because I was like, because I was, I think. I think I was about six months in the uh, in the job at the time in uh, in Dublin head office, and like you can imagine, I was like, I mean, I was buzzing. Like, I mean, this was like this was really like a, this was just an amazing job for someone like me to get that was like big into betting. So, I was big into golf as well at the time. And I just I just got carried away. I've no like I've no idea what I've no idea what my thought process was, but I do remember uh, I do remember going into the meeting with say with HR and uh, and my manager at the time and. Uh, I basically just put, basically just put my keys up and up on the table and I just said, "This isn't going to happen, is it?" So I just said, "I said my position is on on uh, on tenable, isn't it?" And he was just like, "Yeah, this has basically gone you know up to the board in Labrook, so yeah, you're done." Okay, now after not being sacked by Labrook, you also weren't sacked by Paddy Power, and you said no, you sent the evidence. I, no, that. no, I definitely wasn't sacked by Paddy Power. That's that's a uh, that's just that's just something people like to throw at me on Twitter, but I I I, uh, I was hundred percent not sacked by Paddy Power. So, so what did that with Paddy Power? Uh, well, I mean, look, Paddy Power was fine. I did, I did, I did, I did good four years there. Well, I did a good three years there last year, not so much, and just just came to a head, and uh, I basically angled to get to get uh, redundancy, and yeah, so I took I took a chance. Okay, and you worked with some good people there. You must have learned quite a bit. Oh, uh, yeah, work work some brilliant people there. Yeah, that um, yeah, that that was like that. The I, I would say the first two three years in Paddy Power was definitely my most enjoyable. Uh, time in the betting industry but look nothing, nothing lasts forever and at that time it was more people was I don't know if they still do it people were still creating markets and pricing up races but yeah but Paddy like Paddy Bar owned that I mean they, mm. they were they were pricing everything um, like they did they, they had a compiling team I was on the risk team and uh, yeah it was, it was real it was real real uh, it was real good working there and they were still laying winning punters uh, well it kind of kind of changed over time I mean when they when I started working there, they were laying like massive bets in the shops and that. But I mean, I mean, you know, you quickly, you quickly realise you can't, you can't do that in in the UK. You know, you're, you're just getting, you're just getting uh, rolled over by syndicates. So yeah, it ch it, cha it changed over time. But I mean, yeah, they they, they were laying bets. Mm -hmm. So mean, when you when you um when you started working there, fairly sort of inexperienced, were you surprised by the number well, I, of people? I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I was inexperienced. I mean, I, I wasn't I wasn't green or anything. I mean, I was I was pretty up to sp like I was up to speed quick enough. It, for all that I didn't have any online, any real online experience. Yeah. So what, what I was going to say, it, it were you surprised by the number of people that were really had the game by the gonads and were winning? 
Well, you're, you're, forgetting that you're, you're forgetting that I was coming from Ladbrokes. So when I was coming from Ladbrokes, I could see all, 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 all the... Uh, all the real big, the, the real big players, what they were doing. So, yeah. if anything, I could see less than Petty Paul. Right. Okay. And were the, you say the big players? Everybody thinks that, but were the people sort of chipping away under the radar? They had a, a really good strike rate that you were sort of impressed by. Yeah. Well, there, there, there was there was one there was one there, and he. Uh, I mean, pe- people people could guess if they want, but I mean, it's uh, it works for at the races. But I mean, he's he, no one knew who he was at the time. But uh, um, yeah, I spotted his account fairly quickly. Okay, now you were adverse, you tell me, to being told what to do by people in charge. So was that was that basically left you no option but to go on your own and be your own man? Yeah, in in, in the end, yeah, in the end, probably yeah, I was probably I was probably my own worst enemy at times. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I probably like um, it's pro- I'm probably always kind of around the line, and you know, eventually when you're always around the line, you're you're going to fall over it. So yeah, so I probably yeah, it was probably the. Uh, the orchestrator of my own downfall there. And do you regret any of the things that happened? Any of that? Would you wish you were still there working for the big firm? No, no, because it, because it just I mean it, like it just it worked it worked it just worked out well for me because um, I mean the, the would say the two years after I left Powers or two three years after I mean that was that was that was just brilliant. I mean it was absolutely brilliant. I was just going around Dublin, betting. It was you know it was fun. You could spend time with your missus, whatever. Uh, you you know you're not going home stressed about work. You're not. You're just. You're just. Uh, yeah. It was just. It was just good fun. So we did you manage? Were you already gathering your contacts while you were still working with with Paddy Power? I mean, no. I mean, like I was, I was, I was doing that long before that. I mean, the, like the first, the first guy I got into contact with is uh, uh was a guy called um Brian Hartigan, um, and uh, like I went to meet him in Cheltenham, when I was I'd say eighteen, um, it was when Easterback was going for his fourth champion hurdle, and obviously he pulled up. But I mean, I I I I went to the trouble of going to, to Cheltenham like to meet this guy and like eventually I kind of said you know, can we swap you know horses and that so I mean I was always uh, I was I was always at that sort of thing but uh, yeah I mean, of course like obviously when I if when I left Powers I mean, you go and you try and tap up a few people and uh, you know, try and say okay well you know I could help you with this can you help me with that so. Um, that's that, I mean that's 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 the only way to win at the game I think. And you told you said to me that your main aim and it's still your main aim is to survive. I oh, just survive. I mean I'm not I don't want to be like like I'm ne- I'm never going to be Tony Bloom. I'm never going to be Harry Finley, the good version. Um, so yeah I just want to I just want to survive. Just just get get a wage like uh, like like anyone else is working.